when I couldn't strength train um, because I wasn't old enough, I would get my book pack from school. I think this was, I don't know, maybe second or third grade. Uh, um, and I would fill, we had a big encyclo uh, encyclopedia set um, like down in the basement. And I would grab the encyclopedia books and fill my backpack. And I would run up and down the stairs in my house and I would play the Rocky uh, <laughs> soundtrack on the, on the tape player. <laughs> Swear to God, you know what I mean? So and, and, you know, my dad's just cracking up. He thinks I'm a little maniac. And then I'd have him throw my feet down, uh, like do an ab, you know, like I would put my hands on his base of his legs and yeah. he'd throw my feet down. And then I would jump rope in the living room and I would be playing the Rocky soundtrack every time. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's, and, and thinking back, I'm like, man, there was a lot of foreshadowing in that moment. It makes a whole lot of sense now. <sighs> You're listening to the Born Primitive Podcast. Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Born Primitive Podcast. I'm here with my co-host, Big Tony. Tony, good morning. Good morning, Bear. And today, uh, we want to kind of get back to our roots as a brand, and we thought it would be appropriate, um, you know, talking about winning in the gym. Um, you know, kind of fitness and human performance is a big part of, of what we promote here at Born Primitive, and even down to the employee level, pretty much everyone here likes to get after it in the gym and, and you know, we all kind of see the benefits that having a good fitness routine can have in other aspects of your life. So we kind of wanted to hone in on that. Big takeaway on this one is is, is, is just that. Um, get your butt in the gym. Um, a lot of us have, have a bunch of shit going on in our lives, but you cannot discount the ridiculous benefit that being, you know, um, dialed into your fitness routine can have in, in all of their components, particularly, I mean, obviously the physical component, but the mental side as well, and just the overall enhanced vitality that it creates. And, uh, you know, I'm fortunate for whatever reason, just kind of became a little gym rat, you know, around seventh or eighth grade. That's kind of you did as well. And it's just been, I, I wouldn't know how to do anything different. Like, it's just kind of what, what we do, you know what I mean? But there's a lot of people uh, that are intimidated by the gym or have so much going on or they, they at least think that they can't get to the gym. So hopefully we can get into that and, and maybe uh, sway a few people to, uh, to get a little motivation to get back in. But Tone, before we get into kind of the, the, that, the meat and potatoes of it, I want to have a little fun with it. I want to hear your first gym memory, whenever that was going away, if you even have one. Yeah. Uh, well, before, so first off, our high school weight room would, would make you die laughing. It is. I don't know, dude. Ours was pretty bad. Was it? Oh, yeah. And it stunk. Yeah. Uh, and it was hot. Yeah. Um, but yep. I don't know. Maybe we can yeah, yeah, find I, some old I, pictures. I, I bet I got a friend. I, I have one friend who's always good at taking pictures. I bet we could find some. So. But before even so, before even starting there, which was around seventh grade, is when we kind of started going to that gym a little. Me and a couple uh, other friends who were in the same sports. I had a guy who had graduated from our high school and went to the. I think he went to the Marines. He came back and we were having. I think he it was at like a football practice or something. He told us to build the strongest core. All you have to do is have a twenty five or forty five pound plate and do five sets of 25 suitcases every night. So a suitcase, it, it, picture you're just laying on your back. You have a plate in your hands. You extend the plate over your head, out laying on your back. You extend your feet out. So you're in a big, you're, you're, yeah. you're flat on your back. And then you just pull everything in like a suitcase, extend back out. So I, I share that because I literally got a 25 pound plate. And every night before I went to sleep, I would do five sets of 25. And it actually, I mean, my body, you, you know this, those newbie gains, like my core, <laughs> my core was rock solid. I had these big, like these big six pack abs, but looking back now, it set, it, that's something I'm still, that, that kind of, that, that patterning that I drilled into my body over a year of doing no low back, no legs, no glute, just literally doing crunches every single night. It gave me ripped abs. But then when I actually went to the gym, which is the question you initially asked, I was already kind of shaped like a bow. My, <laughs> my, core, my core was so tight, um, but I had no posterior chain at all. So <laughs> rewinding then to when I'm actually at the gym, and I, I, we were laughing before we went on air, my friends and I, we would load the squat rack up. We had no clue on form. There was no one there even really telling us. There was no program to follow. There was one guy always monitoring the weight room. We would throw like 275 on, and then I'm not kidding, Bear. We would go down about two inches 
two inches because if not, oh, like we had no posterior trust chain. Trust me, so I know. <laughs> I remember. I remember. It still drives me crazy. Yep. I went back to the high school um, a couple of years ago, or it was, I mean, longer than that, but I was, it was like over Christmas and I got to sneak into the high school weight room and I'm watching these football players that think they're the, these little badasses that have like 405 on the bar and they're all around the squat rack, like yelling and hollering. And I peek over, I'm like, no chance this kid gets this. He goes down three inches, racks it, everyone goes nuts and it's like, it's brutal, dude. That was it. That kid can't squat two twenty five, and he thinks he squats four hundred five. Yep. And you know what I mean. Yep. So trust me. I, I yep. <laughs> and that and that was the same with all exercise. It wasn't just squat. Like we're benching, our our elbows are flared out. Like nothing, no no form whatsoever. Um, but I'll tell you what, we were consistent and we loved it. And I I fell in love. I, I and my be- best friend still to this day who went on to play college uh, football, we became obsessed. Like we. We would show up, um, even if we had practice, like we would have basketball practice, we would either come at five in the morning, his mom would bring us, even in junior high, because somebody would open the weight room at five, and then the principal ended up giving us a key. So we had our own key to get into the school and go down to the weight room. And yeah, we had no clue what we were doing, but we were consistent, man. And, and there was just something about blaring music in there um, and throwing around weight. Now, it was a complete ego lift. There was no athletic eventually it evolved a little bit to where we realized we were idiots and we started to like (laughs) train a little more like put some speed and some agility and like do some like athletic lifts but the first two years bear we were first off taking c4 or jacked which i'm I'm sure you took both of and and once again milligrams of caffeine what's that it's like if one scoop stopped working what'd you do you did two scoops then (laughs) and then if two scoops started working you did three and looking back now it's like i would never in a million years do that but I mean, it built not only some friendships, but it also set up just like a grit in you that like once I was around in, in college, a higher level strength conditioning coach, he had actually come from the Los Angeles Dodgers, but was from West Virginia. So he came back just a, a, a really intelligent guy. He used to always laugh at me. He's like, dude, you he, what would he say? He's like, you have the horsepower of a Ferrari with the frame of a, a Prius because he's like, you know, that's a compliment or yeah, not. It's not, it's like a, it's, it's a very like backhanded compliment in the sense that like I had such a drive and was like extremely explosive in weird ways. But when you watch me move, you were like, Oof, cause it, like we throughout all of high school, we had these meathead coaches down there. Eventually, once we got to like sophomore, junior, senior, you actually had a coach but we were training like we were going to the fucking powerlifting championships. It's like, <laughs> guys, we're supposed to be playing baseball and football and we're, we're doing uh, 10 sets of 10 on the bench press. So, no. so give, give that's me that. That's, that's, that's the rundown of my initial uh, <laughs> Sounds experience. Sounds very but, similar. Dude. What, yeah. What did you, I, like? I mean, honestly, my first gym memory is kind of hilarious. I, I literally vividly remember this. I remember where the bench was, everything, the smell, we did a, it, my dad finally started uh, to let me lift weights starting in eighth grade. Um, and uh, I was asking him forever. He finally, cause he was worried like it was going to stunt my growth. I don't even know if that's a thing, but um, it was for me growing up there. Like you can't start lifting till eighth grade, like actual weights. Um, he let me do other stuff before that. Um, so I was all excited and we had a little carpool crew coming from the neighborhood and we'd go lift. And my, we did a, the first day we just did a one rep max bench press just to see where we were at. And I remember I got um, 90 pounds, eighth grade, <laughs> absolute animal. The two tens and the two and a half just drilled it. And then my buddy Jared put the tw- the big old 25s on and he got 95. And then I got buried by 95. And I remember I was so mad because we were driving home like in her, his mom's minivan. And I'm like, I was so furious that Jared got 95 and I got 90. Yeah. So that was my first gym memory. But it's, I crack up because... I look at who I am now, man, and I look. There was so much foreshadowing that that is, makes so much sense now. But I, I remember um, when I couldn't strength train um, because I wasn't old enough. I would get my book pack from school. I think this was I don't know maybe second or third grade, um, and I would fill. We had a big encyclis, uh, encyclopedia set um, like down in the basement, and I would grab the encyclopedia books and fill my backpack, and I would run up and down the stairs in my house. And I would play the Rocky uh, soundtrack on the on the tape player. <laughs> Swear to God, you know what I mean. So and funny. and you know my dad's just cracking up. He thinks I'm a little maniac. And then I'd have him throw my feet down, uh, like do an ab. You know, like I would put my hands on his base of his legs and yeah. he'd throw my feet down. And then I would jump rope in the living room and I would be playing the Rocky soundtrack every time. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's and, and thinking back, I'm like, man, there was a lot of foreshadowing in that moment. It makes a whole lot of sense now. And what, um, what were you built? I mean, you're you're a brick shit house now. What were you 
because you weren't an early bloomer, right? No, it's not no, like I kind of developed late. My sophomore year playing football, um, I was 6'1", 130. Whoa. And I was I was playing varsity, but I was like kind of a backup, but I got a little bit of time. And um, I remember I went into the the off season, and there was my linebacker coach who uh, passed away, but was a huge mentor for me. But he was a hard ass, and he he was all about tough love. Um, and he was like he did, and he said, "What do you want to eventually do?" And I said, "I want to play Division One football." And he like he literally laughed at me in that in that room, and he was like, "Are you effing kidding me?" He said, "You're you're one thirty soaking wet, like you you have no F natural athletic talent." Blah blah blah. And I remember um, walking out of that room saying, "All right, we'll we'll fucking see about that." Um, and just, you know, lived in the weight room. Um, I was actually his student aide. So like you could do a strength training class, but then you could also be like an aide to a teacher for a class. So I asked him, Hey, can I be your aide? And I would get back to back late weightlifting classes in the middle of the school day. And even during football season, baseball season, basketball season, I still lifted like five days a week. So even on like on game day on a Friday, I, I would tone it down a little bit. Um, but I would still get after it. You know what I mean? So and I ate like a horse. Um, I probably still owe my parents a lot of money from that food bill that me and my brothers had. Um, and even by the time I was a senior year, I was six foot two, two hundred five 205 pounds, um, you know, all state linebacker going to play D1 ball. So it was a huge transformation. But, you know, I, and I think honestly, being a late bloomer, I'm glad that happened because a lot of my friends, you know how it is. Like you have the kid that like goes through puberty when he's in like fifth grade or whatever. And he's like, throwing gas and you know what i mean in baseball and he yeah. like he just destroys everyone um and he's the, obviously the star then but if he's not like <laughs> that false success then they don't work as hard yeah. they can you know what i mean yeah. and then by that by the time that kid's a junior he's been passed up by all the kids that developed later and actually had to work for it yeah so i was glad that i was the opposite i was like everyone else was developing and i'm you know still this little string bean um, and then it was like, all right, by senior year, it's like, all right, now it's freaking time. Now yeah. it's redemption. You yeah, we, I mean? we, we yeah. all have those. We all have those seventh grade running backs that were just absolute <laughs> yeah. stud. And it's then like, he's got leg my, hair. My, Remember, that's what I was looking Mikey for. Mikey Mardo. Shout out Mikey Dude, Mardo. He, in seventh grade, if you had like the curly leg hair, that was scary for his seventh grader. Like this kid's going to this kid's a man. Look at yeah. his leg hair. <laughs> you remember that? Especially in football games. You know what I mean? You'd be like, that, like I can't take that guy oh, yeah. on. He's a grown man. I, I was an early bloomer. <laughs> from a height perspective but i was a string bean i mean in in seventh grade i was six five one thirty five and then eighth grade i was <laughs> i was 155 and you were six six in eighth grade yeah and God, then in then freshman ridiculous. year i was six six one seventy five that's ridiculous yep so <laughs> you're like a little baby giraffe dude it's freshly born i'll show you <laughs> some pictures that would, you would die at. my quad is like it was the circumference of your bicep i'm not <laughs> i'm not kidding yeah and I, you know, I think just to kind of preface anything we're talking about here is like uh, Tony and I both acknowledge that we are n by no means like experts in human performance. There's people, there's so much knowledge out there that is way more dialed in than anything we could ever offer. But I think we're basing this off of our own experience as Division One athletes. Um, I was able to go onto the CrossFit Games and did that whole deal, and then uh, you know was part of a military unit where physical fitness and human performance was was. Um, a demand of the job. So I was, I, I've kind of been living in that world. And now, you know, even though I'm a washed up 35 year old, I, I still, it's a huge part of my life. And I, I still am geek out about it and, and love to, uh, you know, we're always learning that that's never going to end. Um, so for anyone listening that is, as a better pedigree or, uh, educational background in human performance, I, I, I admit, you know, more than us. Uh, and so let's just get that out of the way. This is, you know, some of the shit we say maybe isn't legit, it's just what's work, what works for us. So that's why yeah. we kicked off with the origins. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> I'm hitting the stairs with the uh, encyclopedias rocking the Rocky soundtrack. So, so let's fight. We, we hit the origin. Let's. I, I'd like to hear now, kind of what what does your training look like on a day to day now? And as you said, you have a pretty extensive background in in the CrossFit space. Is that kind of do, do you still lean towards that style of training? Uh, kind of the more metabolic conditioning. Obviously, there's still. Um, very clear strength components of that, but it, it's definitely more of a high intensity type of programming. I, I like to do a hybrid. I, you know, I, I've kind of pulled um, mainly the stuff that my college strength coach taught me, Emil Johnson. And, and you know how cool it is to be like, have a full time coach or coaches that that's their full time job. Like, and that's what they do for a living. Yeah. And, and, and you, all you got to do is show up to the weight room and, and, and they own you. And you just, you know, for four straight years, that's all you do. So, you know, by doing that, you just naturally learn the movements and just different stuff that is, you know, and how to just honestly get after it in different methods. Um, so I kind of take a lot of the stuff Emil taught us, 
but then I also learned a lot in the CrossFit space. Um, and, um, so I, I kind of blend the two. And for me, I think the goal and not to say this is how everyone should do it, but I want to be big, fast and strong, but it's important to me that I can sustain it if something were to go down, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And there's nothing wrong. If you're the meathead guy that goes and does bench and all in like the big lifts and like you never get out of breath ever, like I don't fault you, but just know in an actual functional capacity, like that will not really do a whole lot beyond like 30 seconds. And like, if you can't move, like it's not even going to do anything. If you can't throw, like, I don't care if you can bench 450 pounds, you can't throw a punch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Do, do so, jujitsu, do <laughs> one jujitsu class yeah. and you will leave uh, humbled very quickly. Yeah. So, yeah. so for me, it's like, all right, I want to, you know, there's a physical component. Like I obviously, I want to look good. Um, you know, we all want to look good naked. Like, so that's cool. Um, that's a big part of it. Not going to lie. Um, but also the, 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 what if component for me, especially now that, you know, we're dads is like, all right, if shit goes, goes down, I want to be able to dominate another man. I mean, I, I, I know that probably sounds ridiculous to say that, but to me, that's a big part of it. Um, if, if it gets to that, I want to be bigger, faster, stronger, more explosive than that man or men. And I want to be able to sustain the violence longer. Um, and I have a very high level of confidence that the man I'm up against, if it's, if that's a situation and he's pulled a gun on whatever it is, you know, grocery store, I don't know if I'm helping some old lady at the grocery store that, that is getting mugged, whatever it is, you know, it hasn't happened yet, but it could, I want to have a high level of confidence that there's no way that guy trains harder than me. Um, and unless he's some MMA expert, like this is game over, I'm going to, I'm going to destroy this guy. And I mean, I don't know, that's things that I do to find ways to motivate myself when I'm not motivated, even though the likelihood of it occurring is so low, whatever you can do to get motivated. So in those final rounds, when I'm really burning and the lungs are burning, and the legs are burning, like I try to take myself to those moments. Yeah. Um, because I don't have anything to train for anymore. I don't compete in anything. Yeah. So it's like, what else am I going to find? It's like, all right, I'm, I'm training for a ridiculous contingency that may never happen. But if it does... Good to be ready. Yeah, and, and I get to, uh, you know, honestly validate that in a moment and protect someone um, and, you know, tune a guy up that is maybe doing wrong against somebody else, then I'm going to be really glad that I trained hard all those years. So, And, and what does that... How does that kind of play out for you, like, within a week? Like, what... I know you kind of said a hybrid of maybe some metabolic conditioning, which is more kind of the CrossFit space, and, and it doesn't have to be CrossFit, but then also the strength aspects. How does that play out from a, a programming on a, on a week for you? Honestly, like I, I wing it, and I shouldn't, and I think that's one thing that like we were talking about before this. Like I really want to get on a program, mm -hmm. but for me, just my life is so busy. Like I kind of got to get in, get after, and get out. But I make sure I bench every week, back squat every week, and then I make sure I do power cleans every week. And I'd like to do more than that. Like if it's a good week, I'll also do front squats and I'll do incline bench on the alternate day. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, if I, I, you know, I'll snatch two if it's a good week. So like those are the kind of the things that are nice to have. But if I can only do two main movements for me, just because I like the bench, it's fun. And then squat, obviously, for and then power clean, like those three. And then I'll do the conditioning after. Um, I want to get my heart rate up. I want to get out of breath. Um, I, you know, I think for my body composition, that's made me like a little bit more cut up because I'm, you know, ramping things up. And, yeah. um, you know, I don't know the science behind it, but I think it, it it's helped there. Um, and like I said, I, I want to actually be able to sustain it um, if I ever had to, um, just because I think it's a little bit artificial. If you're just this big jack dude that like looks looks dangerous, but like, beyond that like you, you can't do anything with yeah. it to me it's just i don't i don't prefer that yeah. i would rather it be a little bit less big but like okay well um there's explosive power you can't see that on someone right yeah. if, if you've been doing power cleans and stuff and explosive movements that won't show up on like how muscular you muscular you are you know what i mean for sure but that will matter right yeah the 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 programming part is an interesting one kind of the difference and you just touched on it is the difference between having something that you're showing up doing every day because it's programmed out versus winging it, and we we all do that at times. We all wing it at times, but there really is a even a I think a psychological benefit to having that program in place because you kind of even go to bed the night prior knowing it, it almost excites you. Like I know exactly because you you look ahead, you look at what you have for the week the next day, um, and and kind of get excited about what you have coming up, and then it's also I think easier to track your, your gains on, on a week to week basis. So I know for myself, like in, in we're friends with those guys over at mountain tough, they, they created an app that, that I, I speak, I've converted a lot of my good friends, uh, some of which are also friends of yours to, to using their app just because 
they, theirs is very almost similar to CrossFit in, in the sense of like high intensity, um, a lot of strength components, a lot of conditioning components, a good mix of everything, even flexibility. Uh, but they, they have an app that shows the video, always has the exercises, has a PDF of the exercises themselves, and then has a comment section where you can comment. And, and of course, you start, start we, we, we all yeah. have, we have aliases. Of course, mine's Ron Avalone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have aliases where you can comment your time or your weights. And, and that, that gives for people like us who are super competitive, kind of gives you something to, to look at and compare yourself to that it makes it a little more exciting because I know I, I've gone three weeks, two months, three months where I'm kind of showing up in, and just doing what kind of feels a little or intuitive, I guess. And there, there's a time for that, especially if you're looking to do like a deload week. But you definitely get to the end of that and you're like, okay, I'm coasting. And you start to see that you're not really working towards a goal. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the takeaways, I, I think a lot of people listening to this probably have a good fitness routine, but there might be some people that are kind of like a little bit lost and, okay, what's the next move? I kind of just go in there and go through the motions. And we've all been there. And I'm, I'm kind of guilty of this. I train hard, but I think, um, first step, get a good training buddy and find a program because that will keep you training buddy will keep you accountable yep. and, and it brings up the intensity and we all know the value of that. And if you can't find a training buddy, definitely just getting on a program because like you said, it is awesome to be able to you're laying in bed the night before and you see the workout posted and you're like, oh shit, mm -hmm. that's gonna be terrible. Yep. You know what I mean? You start getting your mind right for it. Um and you just go in and you do what you you do what it says. That's it. You yep. don't have to think. Um, and it's not like it's any easier, but it takes um, the guesswork out of it. And then if you can find a way to hold yourself accountable um, and get some stack some wins um, for, you know, you're five, six weeks into the program and you're you're freaking getting your 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 you're grooving. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, but uh, but and it is hard to find a training buddy too. you know, some, getting on the same schedule, particularly like the more busy you get once kids are in the mix and all that. Like it's hard to align with someone that like can do these odd hours or like, Hey man, I only have 30 minutes today. So we just got to go for sure. Um, and then even from a, from a programming standpoint for everyone that, that it may not be the most cost effective thing to pay for an app or to, to pay for somebody to program for you. But there, the, dude, the internet has so much information that you can find uh, free resources as far as a six week, a 12 week program. I know a, a mutual friend of ours, we used to run a, a conjugate programming and there, there, it was unbelievable the amount of free, uh, like 12 week programs you could find. And these were the real, these are dudes that, that were at a high level who were putting out these free resources. So yeah, it, it, it makes a difference. And I, I really think there is a grounding effect to having that thing you're showing up every day, knowing you're kind of touching on. Yeah. And I think, you know, word of caution, there's also some risk in, in online programming. And it's like, while I don't comment on these things, like, I see some programming out there that's so whack and it's from people that have no business being like acting as if they're a subject matter expert on, on human performance and fitness. I hate to say it, yeah. but it's so easy to, that there's no b really barrier to entry. And there's even been cases, and I hate to see this, I mean, there's been people exposed that like their entire online presence was a fraud because they were literally editing like photoshopping like sick particularly there's been a couple females this has happened to recently i won't out them because if they if it's already happened and i don't need to make it worse but they were photoshopping their abs like every picture and they were making their hips go like and someone caught it because there was like a railing that was like oh, no. at a 90 degree and this person was actually denouncing women that do that as part of her spiel like you know what i mean natural this and then she got caught she had to come up forth and be like i'm so sorry i know i've talked shit about that for like the last five years but like oh. i've been doing that the whole time and i'm sorry you know what i mean and she wasn't like she had no background in you know what i mean yeah so if <laughs> be careful um there's a lot of really good programs out there but there's a lot of fraud ones that like it's not even good programming yeah but at the end of the day hey even if it's bad it's better than doing nothing yeah as long as you're as long as you're getting a sweat in and and that's the hardest thing just get in there get moving because you've never you never regret getting a workout in ever ever it's uh, you know what i mean yeah. um and and even if you have to lower the expectation of like, all right today i'm going to go in there and hit a 2k row and do 50 air squats and i'm out of there a lot of times when i have those days it ends up being my best workout because once i'm in, done with that 2k row i'm like all right i'm actually feeling way better i'm going to do a real workout you know yeah. what i mean you almost tricked yourself by lowering like, kind of like what you thought the workload was going to be yep and then once you're grooving you're like you get the headphones in the pre-workouts ripping and you're like let's do it you well, know and think of the difference the difference between how 2 p.m creeps up on you when you've had a, a solid workout in the morning compared to and i know not everyone trains in the morning that's just you and i both do it's wild because we're, we're doing so many meetings here there's so much it's a it's a we're in a very fast-paced work environment and it is so noticeable to me 
at around noon or like I said, between noon and three is usually when if I'm dragging ass, a lot of times it's like, yeah, today was a day where it was it was my day to take Arbor to the daycare or whatever. And the difference between that and then the days where you get in, you 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 do the exact workout that you were planning on doing. You, and our gym has a sauna. So you, you do the sauna. It's like you can hit the end of the day without ever having that law. And not, and not only that's like the the bigger example, but then the subtlety of your interactions throughout the day, the way the way you handle stress, the way you handle adversity, it really changes kind of the trajectory of your whole day if you're able to get in there and, and, and get a solid workout in. 100%. And that's why, you know, typically Thursdays and Sundays are my off days. So on Thursdays now to replace that workout, because I, I don't go to the gym on those days. Like sometimes people will go and like you just do some active recovery. I don't do that. Um, but I, I now replace that Thursday morning with a cold tub session. So yeah. it like kind of creates a similar effect where I'm kind of rejuvenated, um, even though it's different. But I totally agree, man. It's it's a and there's been days where I'm like, ah, I need to get to the office early and I'll I'll, I'll hit a pump at five. Mm -hmm. And by the time five comes, it's just a different. I mean, you still do it, but it's just not the same um, in your whole day. You, you're dragging ass um, because you're not used to that kind of um, almost euphoric feeling you get that you ride for at least a few hours yeah. leaving the gym. Are you um, are you somebody when you uh, when you're training in the morning, do you do you have to drag yourself there ever? Or are you pretty like are you at a point in your life where it, it's it's just part of your routine? I'll say this. I, I never really feel well rested. Um, I actually had a call with my doctor yesterday because um, I do blood work every three months and do the full panel. And my blood work is really good, but my cortisol is crazy, crazy. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of stressors in my life right now that I won't get into that have been a, a kind of an ongoing thing that I've been you know, at war with for quite a while. And I was talking to her and she's been doing this for 25 years and trying to optimize my hormones and stuff. And she basically was like, hey, no matter what we do, there's no medicine. And she said a, a high stress level and always kind of tapping into that. Uh, I think it's the parasympathetic sympathetic, sympathetic yeah. where you're always like kind of uh, feeling like there's a threat. Fight or and flight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I've been in that mode forever um, that she's like, there's, there's no medicine, nothing you can do that will kind of negate the effects of that. Um, you know what I mean? And she said yeah. that that's just like there's nothing I can do and you have to figure that out. Um, and that, that kind of sucks. <laughs> Um, so I think because of that, that's why, because I'm trying to control all the other components of my life. I'm trying to do good, good sleep hygiene. That's why I got the cold tub. I got the sauna coming. I got the hot tub. So I do contrasting. Um, I have meals delivered, right? So I like my macros, I eat within a gram every day. I train five days a week. Like I'm trying to, even despite all of that, right? You yeah. know what I mean? I'm, I'm still kind of in the pain locker because of this major stressor that's going on and that so i can't wait to when i get out of that to feel like that yeah. vitality again but that's when it, it's the difference between like motivation and discipline like when i'm driving to the gym and i'm drinking pre-workout it's I'm doing absolutely nothing i'm not really motivated but i know there's no there's no alternative because i'll feel worse if i don't yeah even though i don't really want to do it in a weird way you know what i mean well and, and there's like some of the people i look up to most and, and some of them are actually in this space a lot of them cross over into like kind of human performance as a whole but w one of the ones that i've always looked up to paul check is a genius in this space has, has worked with a lot of olympic athletes and whatnot his big thing is like okay doctor movement that would be like what we're talking about your actual training doctor diet that's what you're eating what you're putting in your body doctor quiet is a huge one he always talks about and he's like this is the most missed out of all of them and it's exactly what you just said when i say quiet that doesn't just mean sleep that means like if you're not finding moments within your day to reset and kind of calm your stress levels down you could have the most doubt in workout program you could have the most doubt in diet you're going to be revved into your sympathetic nervous system and that's going to that's going to negate all the other stuff you're doing now it's still better to still do those things. Like at least then you're not digging deeper into it, but it's exactly kind of what you just said is that if you're not fine and, and there's the power of things like meditation and even yoga and different things that kind of take you and kick you into your parasympathetic nervous system, cold water exposure is a great one. If you're not doing those things throughout your day and finding a way to kind of, to, to calm down those stress levels, you can end up in a tricky place. And I think he calls it like fit sick where he, he's worked with a ton of people. They come in, they're ripped, six packs, they look great, but he calls them fit sick because he'll even do different panels to test your organ function and all those different things. And he's like, you're a wreck. Like, yeah. yes, you've maintained your physique, you look amazing, but on the inside, you're rotting. And that's like, it's like the burnt toast analogy. It's like, you if you dry out your body too much through staying in that sympathetic state, you really will start to kind of fall apart, maybe not from a physical appearance, but it'll have negative ramifications on on even your mental health as well. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was, there was a, a podcast on a guy that was talking about kind of the, like the veteran community. Yeah. And, uh, they used the term like wired and tired like that. And I was like, man, that that's kind of, it's kind of spot on. Yeah. You know I, mean? I hate to yeah. say it. Um, and you know, coming, coming from that community, it, it's, it's, you know, you, there is kind of a constant on, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, high stress in, uh, environment and high pressure and you know what I mean? So you almost get hardwired to just always be on mm -hmm. and it's hard to kind of flip that switch off. Um, and there's, I need to be better at those, some of those methods you talked about, like even like meditation and like I was doing hot yoga for a while and that was like really good. But then I just was a sissy and just stopped going. Yeah. You know I mean? And it was part of my schedule too. Yeah. Like it was, it just wasn't convenient because well, I could only go like late at night. But. And, it, and it can be simple. You probably see me cut out. I try to do it twice a day for 10 minutes is like conscious walking where I'm just, and we have, I can walk out here across the street and go, there's like a little uh, roundabout just literally six seconds in or inhale six seconds exhale and just walking no yeah. music no nothing and just doing that for 10 minutes then coming back to the office right there it's like a, a little quick reset to to use the breath to to kind of switch modes because it's near impossible at least for me while i'm in here you're going one-on-one -on -one syncs you're in team meetings you're you're on zoom calls like it's very very hard to stay in a calm kind of state during that because if you're talking all the time even your breathings but like your breathing patterns are messed up then so inserting little things like that into your day for me have made such a big difference just to kind of stay grounded and not get too too kind of heady and revved up yeah and i i heard in the huberman podcast he talks about natural sunlight in the morning without sunglasses yes um i i guess that kind of gets the like it wakes you i don't know i don't know what the science yeah, is but it, i've been trying to do that um and he's so he puts the emphasis on like make sure you don't wear sunglasses yeah, yeah. which is you know what i mean again it's little stuff like that that can add up um, yeah. but when the, you, you know, the day is chaotic and this and that it's, it, you gotta be very, um, deliberate in, in being like, okay, I'm taking 10, you For know sure. what I mean? And some of us aren't good at that. And, and are you kind of good at something that relates to that to me? And it's usually I'll have an injury pop up. If I, if I'm revving too hard and I, I'm like, let's say it's a fitness goal or just not taking my care of myself at work or even what I'm eating or not sleeping enough. It's interesting how in those moments, and I, you could even track these, like write them down when they happen, I'll have a lot of little tweaky injuries, whether it's low back or, or neck or something like that. Are you somebody, I, and, and let me preface with, I've struggled with back pain since I've been 11 years old. Part of it is being, I was 6'6 when I was 12. So just some weird <laughs> little things where I grew 14 inches in one year. So that's... <laughs> I, I, what size were your shoes when you were, you, well, you were it's six foot 15. six in seventh grade? It's, if, uh, it's weird. I wore 15 <laughs> from seventh grade until my freshman year of college and now i wear 14. so i, I think it was just a preference thing uh dude you, dude, were, I, you were probably so goofy listen looking. i used to i would buy i think they were like tennis trainers they didn't have a sole like a thick sole so think of almost like the barefoot shoes i'll wear yeah. now yeah that's before anyone knew about those things i would force my mom to buy them from east bay because they did i knew that they wouldn't make me as tall i was super embarrassed because i was so awkward like i was 140 pounds 135 pounds but i was six six so i was bigger than any teacher so you were trying school. to be shorter i was trying to be shorter because oh, if, if the, the ladies love that man you yeah embrace not that. when you look like the slender man they don't, <laughs> they don't. <laughs> yeah yeah so i used to i used to wear flats when i was in in middle school because it was i was embarrassed by it yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, nice. No, what was the was there a question? Sorry, I got off track. I, I forget too. I lost, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so yeah, well, well, shit, man. Where do we go from there then? Um, I, I think like what what have you? Or, or, what, oh yes, there was a question. I got it. There it I is. got it back. Um, are you somebody that have you dealt with a lot of injuries throughout your training career? Because and and I ask because I think it's important to know the difference between kind of a tweaky, uncomfortable injury. And then also a real injury where it's like, hey, man, you, you probably shouldn't be training because I've had in, in myself, I've went through it and then also know a lot of friends. One little thing, their back starts to hurt one day, it derails them. And then their whole training program for three months ends up being off until they realize like, wait, this isn't getting better doing nothing. Maybe I should find kind of the medium ground of like not maxing out, but also not just not doing anything. Yeah, I mean, I, I've always probably erred on the side of being a little bit of an idiot and pushing it. Um, I, I always kind of took pride that I never missed a game because of injury. Um, my senior year I, I uh, of high school, I broke my thumb like week six, and I just I had a giant cast on, and I had to learn how to like literally 
wrestle these linemen with one on one hand, which was really hard. But it was like I was like, I'm, there's no question, I'm, I'm still playing. Yeah. Um, and then in college, I had a bunch of injuries. Um, I tore my labrum my sophomore year and didn't fix it until my after my senior year. I just dealt with it. It would pop out a lot in games, and it was you know. And then my senior year, I was so dinged up. The doc was getting us giving us all shots in the ass, thirty minutes for game time with some. I don't know some type of pain med that would I don't know if you ever got it, it would make your face burn. No, but I know um, that was huge in the yeah, NFL for a while. Yeah, it was it was used. yeah thirty minutes. We'd say we'd line up. There was seven or eight of us that Doc would you know what I mean. She gave it to us and you'd be good. Yeah. And then four hours later, you're in a whole lot of pain. So I was always on the side of like under under no circumstances unless I have a major injury, am I gonna not play? And, and then even in the military. Um, you know, had a lot of back issues and shoulder issues and, you know, just there was no no option there. I mean, you're not going to be like, oh, I, I got to take six months off because I got to fix my shoulder. Yeah. At least I didn't see that from any of the guys I was with. And then when I finally got my whole body MRI'd when I left, the doc was like, hey, you know, you got two herniated discs in your back. Hey, are you familiar that you have a torn labrum in your right and left shoulder and your left shoulder, you also have a torn rotator cuff? And I was like, well, I mean, there's been some discomfort, but like, I'm, I, you know what I mean? Like I didn't let, you know what I mean? I, I didn't think I was yeah. injured. I just thought I was dinged up. Yeah. Um, so I think now I'm still definitely not healthy. I, didn't, I never, I haven't fixed any of those. Um, but let's say my lower back's hurting um, and it's like a five by five back squat day. I'll recognize that, okay, like maybe I slept wrong or something, or maybe I went heavy the day before and like I feel like a little bit weak down there. Um, I'll, 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 I'll lower the weights. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I, I still, you got to show up. Um, but I, again, I, I don't think I'm a great spokesperson for that um because like you know i've probably overdone it a little bit but i do think there's there's something to be said for like don't go down hard unless you're really down yeah. obviously you rupture your achilles you're down hard right yeah you tweak your back you can probably still get in there and even like when i had the shoulder surgery um you know because guys would get a lot of shoulder surgery or shoulder injuries in college um you know as football players and the, the coach johnson would still have us do like one arm bench and one arm stuff and i thought that was weird at first because like isn't that going to create an imbalance and what he told us is that actually the the body will want to find equilibrium right so like that other arm even though it's in a sling when when it it can move again it will want to catch up to the strong arm so you can get the other arm super strong so guys would be doing single arm dumbbell bench with like 140 pound dumbbells right yeah in this with in a sling yeah and they got this arm that has like completely atrophied and has no muscle on it but it would come back quicker so yeah. like i think the takeaway there is even if you're dinged up like there's something you can do maybe you get in the pool and swim non-impact uh, aerobic activity get on the rower get on the elliptical things like that um there's there's something you can do unless it's a catastrophic injury yeah and i think and, and i actually fell into this for a while because i had a back surgery in college you you can get not only overly obsessed with with kind of your own injury, but then also the mechanisms in which you think created those. And I've seen, once again, some humility on my end. I've been this guy, and then I watch people do this all the time where they start to try to unravel their movement patterns so much that they never actually train. You know what I mean? And yeah. there's so many modalities for like, <laughs> I need to get a better hip release and then get my ankle flexion. And, and it's like, yes, if those things that you notice, like if you're having trouble getting to a deep squat and you know that your ankle flexion is miserable, work that into your programming, find a way. But like, I know f I have people in my life more so kind of when I was working in the performance field, like six years, like seven years ago, that's all they would do every day was like focused on I'm releasing my psoas today. And then I'm fixing my shoulder ro external rotation and three years would go by, you would do an actual workout with them. And you're like, you're out of shape, man. You, you like have focused on all these things. And those are joint health and focusing on those things at times can be it, there. There is a value in that. But if that's all you're doing all the time, it almost becomes like this self obsessed thing of thinking you can go back to moving like a kid and like that. It just it, it, very few people end up actually I see a result that I like I look at and say, oh, that that's cool the way they, they did that. It's usually kind of a neurotic uh, search for for a different movement that they, they they want to achieve. Yeah. And it's it's like it, they get way too cute with it. You know what I mean? Like at the end of the day, particularly you know, washed up dudes like us, like we don't, <laughs> there's, there's a large margin for error. Cause as long as you get in there and, and move, like no one's keeping score, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, Oh, if I do this program versus this one, there's gonna be this huge difference. Um, as long as you're stimulating yourself and like getting after it, um, uh, and being smart, like just, you know, lower the bar on what the expectation is and, and just roll with it. Well, and, if, and if work you, through, yeah. CrossFit's really good with this, like work, get strong through a range of motion because a lot of that flex, like a lot of the, the kind of the, the tightness, the like poor joint function, poor external rotation, whatever, 
if you're not doing things through a range or at least the best range you can, you will start to build compensatory patterns that tighten you up in spots. Whereas if you're doing like, if you're doing athletic movements through a full range, you will kind of become flexible. And I told, I think we were before we were on air, I was like, bear, when I was 13 and I grew, I was six, six, I couldn't get within a foot and a half of touching my toes. But then as you build strength, as you're doing weighted RDLs and things like that, your body naturally has to kind of get strong through that range of motion if you're doing it properly. So yeah, instead of getting overly obsessed with like, I'm going to do hamstring stretches every day for a year, it's like, well, work through that range in a strength component. And you'll actually see that flexibility can increase within that. Yeah. And I want to plug CrossFit real quick because yeah, you know, I'm, I, I'm not like a, I'm not like a CrossFit dork. Well, you might consider me, yeah. but I'm not like as diehard as I used to be, yeah. but uh, coming from a different world of strength and conditioning and then getting immersed into CrossFit, I was definitely a little skeptical at first. And, um, you might have heard this from previous uh, podcasts, but I kind of got immersed into CrossFit as a way to prepare for military training because I realized I needed to get my conditioning up because the guys I was running with were kicking my butt and I wasn't getting any faster. And we were doing the same track program. And I, I had to do, I remember I had to do a mile and a half run and I got like over 10 minutes. I think it was like 10 and a half, which I needed to get under like, I think nine. I, was, I wasn't even close. I was slow. And uh, I remember I had to go back and, and retest it. And my, I don't remember what my mile and a half time was, but after doing CrossFit, for like competitively for like a year and a half i was a 240 pound dude and i went and ran a 508 mile right uh, and that's not because i'm cool and bad like that was literally because the programming it, yeah. I, and i followed it and i was religious with the nutrition and the sleep and all that um and then i remember uh, another fun one like an interesting one i it was kind of a, a light bulb moment is like we didn't bench press a lot in crossfit and uh but we did like ring muscle ups and a lot of explosive movements and overhead stuff and clean and jerks and handstand push up you know like a bunch of weird shit and i remember there was one day there was like a, a five by five bench day and i think in in college i, I was benching not that much but because the, all the, the other linebackers were a lot stronger than me. i think i maxed out at maybe at like 340 mm -hmm. it was like the biggest i got and then we were doing bench um and uh, i remember there was a we did a five by five and i literally i was like i'm benching like two years but like so I, I was like i don't know i'm gonna do sets of 250 i don't know and and to put 250 on it goes up easy it's like all right put 280 on before you know it, you're like in the in the mid threes ripping fives, and I literally have not done the movement in two years. And that's when I realized I was like, okay, this is there's something different going on with this type of training regimen because I just did four years at college of all we did. We like we bench twice a week and all kinds of you know what I mean. And I capped out and then I leave bench press for two years and I do only CrossFit and then I come back and I'm ripping 350 for five. Uh, it's, it was crazy, it blew me away. When I think um, that that relates to you saying earlier that there's so much shitty programming out there, which there is that's a good indicator that you're doing a good program is the, that there's a trickle down effect of like, if you're doing a program and you completely lose your flexibility, you completely lose your conditioning. Now, if you're focused on one singular goal and you lose yeah. those knowing, like consciously knowing. Yeah, like I'm if you're a bodybuilder, yeah, and that's fine. That's fine, yeah, 100%. but if, if you're doing a program and, and don't aren't consciously aware that you're gonna be losing those things and you get to the end of the program and those things have fallen away, there's, there's holes in that programming. Whereas like, I, I know CrossFit, the guys at Mountain Tough, I know they do a great job of this. You should get to that. And you maybe you're not the the strongest you've ever been or the, the most conditioned you've ever been, but you'll have that moment of like, holy shit, I feel good in all these different, whether it's like slow state aerobic uh, exercise, anaerobic like uh, metabolic kind of conditioning or strength, like I'm holding my own in all of these. That to me, those are the signals that the programming you're doing is is well rounded and kind of touching on all those different systems. Because it's easy, man. You know that if you if you over leverage into strength for t even 12 weeks and do no conditioning, that that's that's I told you that's what got me into Mountain Top initially was that we went and played pickup basketball and I'd been doing more <laughs> like conjugate strength stuff and I was like, good lord, I was, I was breathing, <laughs> give me, give breathing me the like oxygen a cow. Tank. Yeah, oh my yeah, god, it was sad. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and that's uh, that's exactly why I train the way I do, because I know all those guys that are doing that, like if it ever comes down to it, like they have no gas tank. Yeah. And again, and, and again they might not care if and if they don't, it's OK. Yeah. They might just be like, hey, I want to have a I want to deadlift 650 pounds. And if that's your goal, well, cool. Yeah. Then 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 keep doing that. Then don't worry about conditioning. But for if you want to be a little, you know, a little bit more well-rounded, that's the approach um, I think we should take. And I think as as like in this field has boomed and, and people get a little heady here, too. But it's important, to, like the, the the aerobic exercise, the metabolic stuff like th there is now the science to show like just how beneficial those are for your health. So as guys, it's like, yes, be strong, be muscular. That's cool. But like there are other benefits as far as like your health and, and even your your lung capacity and VO2 like those little things, if you can maintain those through time, like you, 
you're rolling back the clock as far as you're not going to be that 40 or 50 year old who looks like they're 70 and can't move and can't pick up their grandchildren yeah. when you're 60. So to me, th those things keep me going too. like, I mean, take a walk around at, at any gas station or grocery grocery store. It makes me sad. Yeah, it, like like 90 percent of people. It's like not only would they never in, in the example you use, would they be able to hold their own in any type of confrontation if they had to? But they they can't even they can't even bend over. They can't step up onto something. And that that to me, like that's a miss on us as a culture. Like we I, I, I like hold movement as such a high value in my life. And and I think if you treat it that way, you can you can maintain that into your I mean, you see people that don't do it, do it the opposite kind of the way that I think we're wired and they're 70 or 80 still running, still still lifting weights. And th that to me, like that's impressive. Yeah. And it's just like we think we can't fathom the people that never make it into the gym. They think the same about us because like it's just a totally different lifestyle and they see the world through a different lens. And again, there's nothing. It doesn't mean they're a bad person. No. Of course, like it, there's plenty of people that it's just we are obviously proponents of it, but it's because we've been around it our whole life. Yeah. We've been you know what I mean? It, we've been, we were immersed in that. Um, but uh, you can't you can't downplay the benefits in in you know, it, ideally, if they're, it's crazy, man, you see the old clips of like PE class in like the fifties, you know what I mean? Yeah. And now, I mean, I don't know what, even what it is now. Um, it's probably, it's my guess is it's probably freaking optional. And Musical this and chairs. That. You know what I mean? Um, they probably can't play dodgeball anymore because they probably say it's offensive and yeah. shit like that. Yeah. Um, it's just, man, we've, we've, we've softened up a little bit. Um, but, um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's crazy. But best part of the day for sure, you know, it's what you look forward to, and in, in, in that 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 feeling you get when you leave is you, you never you never never ever regret leaving the gym or like doing your workout never never. never. Cool. Well, I, I think I mean for the listeners, I know this one was a, a little more well, informal. I, I want to still have. Some? Well, I, I want for you. What do you when you look at people in the gym? Because like we all kind of people watch. What do you see are the biggest mistakes people make? Like that where you kind of roll your eyes and like, God damn it, I wish I could coach this person. Or, you know, you kind of see just different training methodologies that or, or maybe it's not even considered that. But like, what do you see that that people can like you think could could stop doing or 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 alter? Yeah, think, if anything, I think there's a couple that stand out. Some of which I think this there's one that maybe leverages a little more towards females and one that's a little more towards guys. Yeah. Uh, I'll start with the guys and I'll, I'll call myself out that this was me from ages 13 until basically 19 in college, it kind of got forced out of you because the, the guys knew what they were doing is guys who the upper body monsters, where it's <laughs> like, like no, no lower half, like not only, and you can, it, the worst is when they build an upper body that looks good. They've got the biceps, the triceps, the chest, the shoulders, but then not only do they not have muscles on their legs, but their like hips and stuff are locked up. Like I, to me, there's no worse look than having like the toe, the frog build where it's like, they're kind of like locked up and tight and you can just tell they can't move, but then the upper body's all jacked. So I, I, I definitely see some of that. Um, and just having, I, I still enjoy sport. I still love like golfing, playing just any sport. I'm, I'm, I'm always, always in on. And to see like that build, it's just similar to yours when you're like, if something were to happen to pop off in a grocery store, I look at them and it's like, dude, if you had to play spike ball right now or basketball, yeah. you're going to look like a damn clown. So that's one. It's like, guys, incorporate like to me, even if you're doing you could do lower body three times a week. And if you're doing some heavier lifts, your upper body will still kind of maintain through that because your whole like yeah. heavy squat yeah. like that's still upper body uh, core low back lift as well as the your 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 upper traps holding the bar. So yeah, that's on, on the guy side. It's like, make sure you're doing lower body. And for me, attack your weaknesses. Hamstrings are a very common one. Like, like I see a lot of dudes literally no hamstring at all. So it's like, and that was me once again, when I was 13 through 20, 22, focus on your weaknesses, make sure you're doing lower body. Even there's a lot of studies surrounding testosterone and how it's, it really is like your legs and butt that like, if you're able to, to grow muscle there, that has a, a great benefit on testosterone levels. So that's the guy one female wise. It's, it's kind of over cardioing. And, and I mean yeah, that by dude, there, there's, there, there's a place. Brutal, like, brutal. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's important. Like you like aerobic exercise, even like a 45 minute, say you're doing stair climber or something once a week, I, I like to get in at least a 45 minute, keeping the heart rate around, let's say for me, it's like 140 or 145 beats per minute. But if you're doing that five days a week and doing no other exercises, no strength training, no no uh, kind of high intensity, maybe interval training or metabolic conditioning, I think you're kind of missing a big piece of the puzzle as far as like not only being stronger, but then 
being more capable as an athlete or just just an everyday kind of gym goer. I, that's the one that those are the two right away. I think that that stand out to me. Do you do you have any that? I mean, this, the, you the cardio the, one for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's it, you know I, I want to preface it because like at the end of the day, I like the gym. I, it needs to be a welcoming place, and I don't want anyone to ever be intimidated or discouraged yeah. from being active yeah. ever. So like if that's you and all you're gonna do is go and do forty minutes and walk on the treadmill five days a week. If that's it for you, then hey, awesome! And like, seriously, like that—that's great. And it, like, at least you know, like the, your limitations. Yeah. But I also don't think it's likely sustainable because I think people are going to get really bored doing a sixty-minute elliptical session five days a week because that's all they know how to do, and they likely won't be in the gym in a month, right? It, they'll do it for a few weeks and they're gone. Um. So I, I just, I wish. Um. And, and that's true for guys and girls. I think it is a bit more typical with females but it, there's definitely dudes that just go in there and that's all they do I, I particularly some of the older guys which maybe at that point maybe that's what you want to do but um it's like i i want to be like hey give me 12 minutes of your time look go hit a metcon with me and we will get three times more out of it than you are in that 60 minute session like watching a tv show on the elliptical you know what i mean um and i also hate like the whole like i don't want to get big I hate that because I think it's I, gotten I, a little better. I just here's the thing, man. I, again, I don't want to. I don't want to offend anyone um, because I, if any any form of fitness people embrace, I'm all about. I want people to be active, but for some, the people that are typically saying that are are the people that it's like, hey, let's try to get in the gym three or four weeks in a row first before we start talking about I don't want to be too big. Yeah, it's almost like offensive. Like, oh, <laughs> you think you're gonna get too big? Like, let's get a consistent gym program first. Yeah. You know what I mean? If we start getting too big, let's worry about it then. But to say, oh, I can't strength train, like I can't do bench press or squats once because I'm worried I'm gonna get too big, that is so ridiculous. And it's like muscle is a good thing. You know, you know what muscle does? It increases your metabolism. It's like it's like an engine in a car, man. It's like what burns more gas? The freaking F three fifty dually right that's yeah. getting like nine miles a gallon diesel or you know what i mean or the the prius if you're a 120 pound person you're a prius you're getting 60 miles a gallon right which in in you know in our human evolution is a good thing because like you know when back when resources were finite and you like couldn't find your next meal that was a good thing but we now know that's not really a concern anymore um, so when you're you're resting metabolic rate you're, you're burning way less calories when you're just sitting there where like you know, big mouth breather like me, I'm 245 pounds. I burn a ton of calories just by sitting here. So it helps me like when I have a, you know, on weekend when I want to get a bunch of wings and pizza and drink a few beers and watch football, I can mitigate that much quicker because it's, it's, I'm just going to burn it all off anyway. I don't have to work out. So for, uh, particularly for the females, it's, I, I wish there was a little bit more of a embracing of like build muscle because that will actually make you burn way more calories and you'll lean out and you'll look better yeah. um but it's like they're afraid of muscle and, and i and again i don't, i'm i wish you know it, it honestly would be cool to get like a like a female athlete on here to talk through this because i don't think i'm a i don't i'm not a good voice for like the female like women's fitness like i'm just not um that's just my you know kind of meathead opinion on what i see i just wish there was less fear of building muscle because the physiological limitations because of like just the hormone levels and all that, like it, you would have to do a lot. Like the girls that compete in the cross at the highest level, like they're competing six days a week, five hours a day. Yes. Do they get pretty stacked up right before the CrossFit games? Yes. Okay. You are not going to look outliers. like, you are not going to look like Katrin David's daughter. Okay. You're not. So don't, like, don't think that that's like, you know what I mean? Like she's been working on that level of fitness for 10 years. And she's elite, you know what I mean? So that's what makes me a little bit, you know, I roll my eyes a little bit. Um, but again, if you're even getting in there, getting anything in, I'm, I'm proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. And there's practical, like it, it it's, it's to like bone density and main, like I said, maintaining that strength into your older age. Those are huge indicators. I know grip strength in your like seventies and eighties, there's a direct correlation between that and several kind of factors that lead to early death basically. So yeah, there, there, there's very, and like you said, we, we, we're not sounding like, we sound like dorks here being like, oh, if you do cardio, if that's what you're into, so be it. But even one day of strength a week, just like, hey, farmers carries for five sets and just kind of building your grip and just overall ability to handle some weight and gravity, there's going to be benefits to that. So yeah, it's, it's shooter's preference, but definitely, definitely, I think you're missing part of the puzzle if you choose to kind of leverage only into one system. It's the same as the bot, like, I feel the same about bot, some bodybuilders too, where it's like, 
if that if you're doing it as a sport and you're looking to compete, yeah. I get it. But if you're if it's kind of all about just your ego and what you look like, it almost it can become an obsession. And you see those yeah. people where it's like, and they, they do it through exogenous hormones and whatnot, where it's like, dude, like, what is this for? Because you're not making money off of it. Girls actually at a certain point, like I don't I think don't like when you're too big yeah. and you're destroying your inner and out like your the inside of your body. So yeah, same that that's kind of an extreme za- example in the other way, but it definitely isn't only females doing cardio. It's like I just think finding balance within your routine to have a little bit of the elements we talked in that can go a long way. Yeah, and I, and I think on the bodybuilder side, I I have less issue with it because I feel like those it's more a bit more of like almost like a hobby and a, and a quest to like you know what I mean? Like, yeah. a comp- you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I, I kind of like that, even though I, I will say I don't think there's a, a functional back end to it. Yeah. But but at least I, I think they know what they're doing. And, sure. and it's very specific. And there's there's very specific intent to it. Yeah. Um, and again, that's like, I want to caveat all of this. It's like, whatever your fitness regimen is, it's totally cool. Yeah. We're talking a little shit right now. Yeah. Um, bullshit. But, but because that's what you know, we um, this is the, the kind of the fitness we like to align ourselves with. But um you know, there's, it's not the right, it's not the end all be all. There's no right answer. Um, and, and just being active. And I think that's the biggest thing. Hopefully as a society, we can continue to try to promote more and hopefully lower some of the barriers. I, 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 you know, I can't relate to this because I've never been afraid to go into the gym, but I do know it can be a very intimidating place, particularly for, for some women that like, they, they feel like they're just, they're self-conscious. And it's like, I wish for anyone who thinks that don't be because, no one actually cares like no one's ever actually looking at how much weight is on the bar no. um and if you're in there getting it um and that's why i think crossfit is it has achieved so much success is that um there was such a camaraderie around the workout um you know you could have a um a 70 year old lady um doing the same workout as me as a crossfit games athlete now i'm probably doing of course a different load and it she's heavily scaled her workout but at the end of the 20 minute AMRAP, we've both had the same uh, stim, you know, stimulus, right? And everyone's high fiving and we're all sweaty and that was hard and it was challenging. And we, we, we bonded over that. And I think that's why um, I wish there was more of that kind of in the regular fitness world, because then maybe some of those people that are just like, oh, I'm not, I shouldn't go to the gym because I'm not, I'm not one of those people and I won't be welcomed. And it's actually like, um, well, if there's way less socializing. Everyone's got their headphones in and their own, yeah. in their own world. It's still not, it should never be an intimidating place, yeah. you know? Hundred percent. Well, shit, Tom. What, 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 what should we wrap with some takeaways? Yeah. What, what, what are the key? T- I, I'll, 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 I'll rattle off a few here um, that we wrote down prior to this. It's just, uh, you know, we talked in some of the other podcasts about kind of stacking wins and, and getting momentum, and I think that is so relevant to to fitness, right? Um, and we've all been there where you lose a few days. And fortunately for me, like if I miss three days, like I start getting a little bit angry and like I that fourth day I'm going in. So thank God I have that reaction. Yeah. But some people will make like if they lose three or four days, then it's like, all right, what's well, a fifth day and before they know it's been two weeks yeah. and they've missed the gym. I'll be pissed. Um, yeah. You know um, what I mean? It starts yeah. affecting my mood. Um so uh, I don't know if that's good or bad, but at least it gets me back in there because I really want to get back in. But just consistency um and and you know getting a routine and on days where you maybe are feeling like you can't keep the routine because maybe you gotta, you know, you gotta take the car to the dealership that morning for an oil change and then you gotta get the kids and this and that and you're okay, I can't hit it today. Maybe it's you can hit it something in the garage for literally twenty minutes once the kids are down. You know what I mean? It's just it, that will keep the momentum and it'll feel like you accomplished something rather than just saying let it slide. So I think just consistency is key. I think we can't discount the just enhanced vitality you have as a human being when you have a, a dialed in fitness routine and that sense of accomplishment and just how that transcends into other aspects of your life, literally everything. Yes. Um, so that's huge. Uh, we talked about muscle and, and how it relates to metabolism. That can't be discounted. I hate the fact when people, I don't want to be too big. You're not going to be too big, and it's just going to make you burn more calories, which is better for your physique. So just you know, build some muscle, and if it gets to that point, worry about it then. I've been trying to get big for 20 years. Yeah, exactly. And it still hasn't it, me too. So. That's what I'm saying. I'm <laughs> yeah, like, we, it, it, happened it is you. an endless quest. <laughs> you know what I mean? You yeah. will not get too big. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then just you know, the last two things on my end is just the importance. If you if you can a training buddy, which you know I don't have one of those right now, but it would be I, I do know that it's a totally different ball game, especially if you get someone who's better than you and uh, and has good drive, and you kind of want to hang with them. Um, man, that's a game changer. And then getting on a program, um, that keeps you accountable. I, I like the mountain tough thing where you can, people are commenting and yeah. you can kind of chirp and like see what other guys are doing and saying, um, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it becomes a little bit of a community 
Um, and there's tons of good programming out there that, that does um, that same thing. Um, so, you know, if you could find a program, that's a great way to get like, I think a hard reset for sure. Like, all right, I'm going to sign up for this 12 week program. And you know what I mean? I'm going to hold myself accountable. I'm going to try to do the whole damn thing and not miss a day. And, uh, and if you can do that, like you, there it is, you, it's just, you, all you gotta do is show up. When it, in it, in it, something to, to build off of that too, is you build your arsenal of, I, I can now program for myself or somebody else. And I usually don't like to, but, and it's only because I've exposed myself to so many different modalities, like different types of training, different, different kind of people who think differently within the space that you start to build up a repertoire or like a, 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 a bank of like, these are the exercises I know from my, like the bang for my buck that, that work best for me. And you can then say you do show up without a program, like you, you've built such a kind of a, a wide array of different exercises and modalities that you can put piece together something really well, even in a hotel gym or something. Yep. And that's only through exposing yourself to people who are smarter than you, people who know way more than you 100%. running through their program. And you're like, oh my God, like, why have I never done this before? So yeah, just, it, it, it really is like in, in whether it's a free resource or find somebody who resonates with you on Instagram, who puts out a lot of information that's very common. And, and doing kind of their their life's work is what you'll end up doing a 12 week program is everything they've gathered. And then you take that and do the same thing. Our last question for me, if you yeah. had one movement to do, you can only do one the rest of your life. What is it? Okay. <laughs> really, real brain buster here. Yeah. Huh, Tom? I would say if it's, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a, uh, I'm going to answer your question, but then I'm also going to give a caveat. <laughs> I would say probably deadlift just okay. because it, it really does. Like if you, if you're doing deadlift, it's going to, it's going to keep you as far as your body goes. Like you're going to, if you only have one exercise, it's going to cover most of your, yeah. most of your basis there. Okay. But then I have always said, and this is going to sound like a, a weird answer. Um, if you give me a sled and about 280 pounds worth of plates, you can you could make an athlete out of just that like you you really because you can do explosive work you can do speed some speed stuff with lower weight yep. but then I'm a huge proponent I actually in, in you knees over toes guy shout out Ben him and I used to train together down in Florida he had a gym and he's become huge now I mean he's been on Rogan he has two million followers he was kind of he, he's pioneered and there's there's he's we he took it from other people who took it from other people it's the way it goes within that community but even just backward sled drags, doing that for like 40 minutes on, that's a, like a good one. I said like an aerobic, oh, yeah. put three or four plates on, put a belt on, attach it to a TRX thing and just backpedal for 45 minutes. Like that will reset your body and build kind of a capability through your legs, butt and, and thighs that translates to just about anything you're going to do in the gym. So one exercise would be deadlift. But if I had one piece of equipment that I could use to train myself or an athlete, it would be a sled with just like 280 pounds worth of plates. Cause I think there, there's so many different things you can do with that. Yeah. That's a good, now can you remove the plates and do movements with just the plates? Yeah. Oh uh, no. Not okay, I was going to say now you're kind of yeah, getting it. Yeah. Like, oh, I can do what's your, what's your, what's your, I was going to say power cleans just yeah. cause like, I just think you get big traps and you just look pot and it's explosive. Yeah. You know, I don't know, but deadlifts, I mean, that's solid. I, and I don't deadlift enough, honestly, it, it always blows up my, my lower back, yeah. but that as far as like a, best bang for your buck you know just putting 225 pounds on the bar and just doing 50 deadlifts if you yeah. just had if you just had six minutes in the gym that's probably the that's probably the best use yeah. of your time yeah. and then you, you bail out of there yeah. you don't even warm up yeah you know what i mean like that'd be a, not a bad day that's you know a, what i mean yeah. right i was doing that's this. a friend who i wish i could mention his name that's something he would oh uh, yeah yeah you know who i'm talking Mr. about mr stanko yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the alias yeah, exactly. um yeah this morning i did uh my my strength coach, college strength coach actually texted this to me. So I was like, fuck it. I'm going to do it. Hex bar deadlift. Yeah. You deadlift. And I put, I did 185, five reps, 12 yards down, five reps, 12 yards back. You do two down and backs and then you rest 90 seconds and you eight rounds of that. So my freaking traps and forearms were, were I like fired that. up. I like that. It was real simple. You know, you're on at 130 rest yeah. interval and you just, you know what I mean? It was, it was straightforward and simple, but my upper traps and forearms were just dying. Farmer's um, carries are underrated too. Yeah. That would be my, because you, if you can work up and scale up to doing like farmer's carries with 130 pound dumbbells, you're bit like you're, you're, you're building a strong base once again for anything. Like whether it's just carrying the weight itself, your core and low back, like those, those are another one that if I, if somebody who hasn't been in the gym is asking, I had a teenage cousin of mine who's starting to get into it kind of ask, and it's like, 
do those because that that like it's so simple it's easy to do you don't feel like you're like insecure doing some crazy squat yep. movement or something so yeah those are those are another one that would be in the top 10 have you ever done farmer to walk with the barbells yes but i haven't it's, no it's, long hard. Time. Yeah. it's hard it's hard in had, college yeah. we had, we did a contest 135 on each bar yeah and and you had to hook grip it which killed yep. because like the angle because yep. you're not like your hands aren't the yeah. way they usually are yeah um and uh and then you know that balance and the, we would you get like max distance effort and it was you know guys would be yelling and screaming and, and we that had was ones that had that. like i think either water or sand in them too so oh, as shit, you, as so uneven thing, as, oh, you, yeah. as you're carrying it it's kind of moving around bullshit well well thanks for tuning in everybody uh, i know we were just kind of rambling on about gym stuff so hopefully you got something out of that but you know i think biggest takeaway hey if you're on the fence of trying to get into the gym or you're in a rut right now with your program find some programming, find, find a gym buddy. Um, you know, when you're not motivated, fall back on discipline, get your butt in the gym. It'll help every other component of your life. And, um, it, you know, if this matters to you, it also gives you the physical tools to protect those that you love and those that you care about. Um, if that's a thing to you. So, uh, appreciate you tuning in. If you can, I think we are still technically in podcast jail because of some topics we've covered, which honestly, we should probably do a whole podcast on that. The fact that the censorship in current society is absolutely insane. That'll probably get me censored again, just by saying that. Um, so subscribe, like, um, review. We appreciate all the comments we've gotten. We've got a lot of really cool guests lined up that keep coming down. Um, and, uh, you know, we're kind of just rolling with this and, and learning on the fly. So if there's topics you want us to dive into, please, uh, you know, send us a DM on Instagram. We'll probably do another Q and a, uh, here in a few episodes. Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks for everyone for tuning in and, and uh, get after it this week. Thanks guys.